afternoon, everybody. I think it's afternoon already. So I stand before you to share the journey. So impact investing has got a bad rep. And I want to start by asking who in this room would feel comfortable if suddenly your financial advisor, your pension fund, your banker called you up and said, guess what? I'm going to take 10% of your pension retirement money and I'm going to put it into impact investing. Who would feel comfortable with that? Put up your hand. So if you look around the room, we probably have 20%, less than maybe 10%. So I'm here today to canvas and to hopefully demystify a bit about what impact investing is. And let me tell you, I am the first person to say that it is confusing. Who am I? I am a finance investment professional with 20 years experience. I've worked for Deutsche Bank, RMB, etc. I've been in investment banking. I've seen every financial instrument from the equity side to the debt side. The most complex BE transaction. I've, I'm a CFA, certified financial analyst. But then I had a crisis of conscience. And I could see that there's more that we need to do for, for our country, for our continent, to actually leapfrog and to save the huge structural, societal, and economic challenges we faced. But it was a very lonely journey. And many a time, I found myself alone, isolated, confused. And so, I thought it's so important in the context of today's discussions to take you on the journey I've been on and why today I try and find those pockets where I can invest a portion of my pension, my little bit of my future family's wealth, the first generation that even has one to talk about in this country from my family side, and why impact investing is a answer, it's not the answer, but it's a answer to bring the scalable solutions we need for the extreme expense of challenges we face. And I'm going to take you on a journey because I mean, I can do the slide decks with the best of them. I've been on those roadshows where you have like 12 meetings back to back, but I'm tired of that. And I don't think it gets the point across. Susan and the other colleagues will take you through the details um, and reach out and find more and learn more because it's a very fast-growing and evolving area. And it's not just about finance, and that's what I'm here to share with you. And to share with all of us in the room, to say, let's learn and not be intimidated by the jargon, but let's focus on the outcome and solutions that would work, because it's not about me and it's not about you. I also want to say the biggest mind shift I've had to endure, the biggest points of conflict that I've seen, I've had to build a bridge over with many of my financial colleagues, is that it's not about this short-termism. It's not about the next quarterly report. It's not about the next half-yearly or full-year annual report. It's about understanding that Greek proverb that says, when old men and women plant seeds, a society grows strong because trees get planted and grow, the shade under which you will never sit. And I think that's the shift which we struggle with as a society, and we struggle with as, and I'm talking as investment professionals, but I'm also talking as a mother and as a woman and as a leader in this country and in this continent, recognizing we need to do something differently. And so I start the journey last year in New Delhi. I participated in the Global Steering Group on Impact Investment. South Africa was finally being accepted on the global stage. We were able to join the advisory boards so that we can have a voice to shape how do we amass all of the trillions of dollars of funding needed to solve the SDGs that's been so eloquently articulated? 
And impact investing is one of those tools. And I'm sitting in this huge auditorium in New Delhi. You can't see the front, you can't see the back, feeling like an ant amidst thousands of people who know so f much more than me, who's been on this journey for decades, I thought. And they have these huge TV screens, and they start a promo. And it's a story. It's a story about a doctor in India, Dr. Chetty. And he grew up really poor, he had nothing, he worked his way, and he was a pediatric cardiologist. He puts up a picture of a child sitting in a bed. You can see it's an it's a, you know, underprivileged poor hospital environment that this child is sitting in, that this child comes from, with its chest cut open, eyes shut, swollen. And my heart breaks, and I weep, and I have an African colleague next to me, and this man doesn't know what to do with me. <laughs> And I say to him, that was my daughter last year. Because we forget that the same challenges you and I face, where we have medical aid, where we are able to solve very quickly in our Santa or in our ivory towers, there are still millions and, 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 and hundreds of millions across the continent who can never conceive. But Dr. Chetty had seen that. He took his expertise. And what did he do? He scaled up a private care hospital facility that treats hundreds and millions of underprivileged young children that would never have had the privilege of having a pediatric cardiologist do a surgery on their child. And not only that, he expanded that to other healthcare facilities. This chain was funded by, you've seen it, a blended finance instrument, a bond, he also was able to ensure that the poorest of the poor got subsidized by government to be able to afford a pseudo-private healthcare medical facility. He also was able to uh, bring in the best world-class applications of business, of private sector, to ensure there was efficiencies and cost reduction so that the poorest person in India could get the same quality of service as the richest person in India at 60% less cost. That is impact investing. And that's why it broke my heart that day, because my child was born with a congenital heart defect. I had to find a specialist. I could only afford it because I could afford it. And as I sat in that facility, there were so many other, in that 24-unit ICU facility, there were so many other children as well who had come from all parts of Africa. And my heart had bled two years ago to say, how do we allow the impact to spread to the rest of this continent? And there I sat, unbeknownst, on a, a journey of discovery for the largest pension fund uh, in the African continent, trying to learn and understand how do we do things better, how do we scale in more funding, how do we ensure that our impact investment initiatives, our development investment initiatives have the best possible world-class models. There I sat, and it was uncomfortable, because it was personal. And it was personal not only because it affected me, but it was because I could see the possibilities. I knew I had in my hand the tools to unlock it. And impact investing became a reality. It became something that's real. Because that company that Dr. Chetty founded and started is one of the largest, most successful listed companies in India. It was rooted by a need. And so I can throw jargon out for you for days on impact investing. It's about profit with purpose. We can make money and we can do good. And, and many people will throw the jargon at you and you will think that they are superficial. But we all have our places and we all need to start somewhere and we all have value to add in this journey of impact investing. How do I know to bang? Three years ago, I decided that not three, probably five years ago, I decided that this, this capital world, these capital markets, these structures, the people I speak to, they don't get it. They're never going to do it. They're never going to change. I wanted to work for an NGO. I wanted to go do CSI funding. And ironically, he turned me down. He said, no, you've got nothing to add. <laughs> and I was so grateful for that because it forced me back to where I was and what I was good at. 
And, and, and that's what I've learned as well in impact investing. It's uncomfortable. It takes a lot of people with very different expertise. But when we find these innovative fun funding mechanisms, platforms, instruments, bonds, whatever you want to call it, it allows you to be the best that you can be with the skill sets you have. And all you need to do is find the, the line to join the dots because they exist. But it is a journey, and it is a long journey, and it is an uncomfortable journey. If I had to say to you one thing I want you to take away from demystifying impact investing is that you will find the right instrument, the right mission, the right scale, the right measurement tool, the right individual, the right institution that matches all your skill sets, all your vision to create something greater for this continent and its impact. I want to, to, to land with, with the last part of, of, of my journey. Again, something very close to home, because this is impact investing. So one of the things we do at PIC, we look at the entire economy, we look at the global thematics, we look at AI, we look at blockchain, we look at food security, we look at clean energy, we look we make sure we understand it all, we, we, ensure, we make sure that the government pension fund that's invested is exposed to all of the long-term structural trends so that the asset base grows, right? That's what we have to do in asset manager. But one of the things we discovered is that it's getting really boring and tired. And if we don't do something structural, the construct of the JSE presents very limited long-term growth opportunities but they exist in the economy. So we do a lot of work in the real economy, understanding the opportunities. We've launched the Project Development Partnership Fund in conjunction with the Unemployment Insurance Fund to ensure that we can start catalyzing new economies, new companies that solve for our African solutions. One of them we're looking at is an incredible app that is like the Uber for taxis so that we can create efficiencies in our economy around all of our workers that have to travel on average two and a half hours a day so that they can have shorter lines Taxis know where they pick up points, or we can get our workforce more efficiently, extended hours. These instruments are real, and they are happening every day. I'm giving you an example of what we are doing, but there are so many people doing so many exciting things. Another project, which is impact investing, which we've done, is around... Um, taking one of our largest challenges, unemployment in the mining industry, where we're seeing mass retrenchment, uh, being able to reskill them, being able to ensure that there are end points for where they can see economies in their rural context. We know also that if you link it to what's happening in the economy, the clean energy thematic, the PGM group metals in and of itself presents incredible solutions for what the world is solving for when we think about climate change, talk about hydrogen economy, talk about electric vehicles, etc. And we were able to convince and to walk a journey in the institution. Many days I walked away, but we have completed a fund whose sole focus is on new applications in clean energy using PGM metals because we can't face 10, 20, 30,000 unemployment in the rural areas every month anymore, and we need solutions. And we were, we were able to solve for that by a fund in an investment context. And so I just want to encourage you, when you think about impact investment, when you think about the journey you've been on, the skill set and the knowledge you bring, don't give up. There's an institution, there's a company, there's a bank, there is a friend, there is a company, there is a, a VC angel investor who will catch your vision and will partner with you, who will bring the capital know-how and alongside with your expertise on how to get real social impact, create something scalable and lasting. In conclusion, the transition is uncomfortable, but the transition needs a mind shift in our term of thinking. It's not about tomorrow and it's not about next year. It's about five years, 10 years, 15 years. 
And what is the legacy we leave in our place in South Africa in this continent today? That means there's an institutional movement, an ability for a company or an area or healthcare or education to be sustainable even when you're gone and all that's left is a tree above your grave. What is it that you can do and start? How do you partner to ensure that it exists beyond your life span? Thank you.